This is a laptop. More specifically, a laptop with a, a uh, broken screen. Now, normally that would have this thing headed straight for the e-waste facility, but what I wanna do is turn this into a home server, more specifically a NAS with all of these parts right here and maybe some extras. So yes, I know the immediate thinking is you don't need a screen to turn this into a server. You don't need anything as long as it works. You could just turn it on, install Linux and call it a day but I wanna do something a bit more sophisticated, a bit more aesthetic. So I guess come along my journey, I'm gonna show you what parts I have here and reveal to you guys the game plan. So as you can see by the fact that nothing is put together, I haven't actually done anything yet, but I have done a little bit of brainstorming. So first, before I dive into this, let me show you uh, the laptop. So yeah, it's an old HP laptop. I got it for $80 off of eBay. I was told everything works except for the screen. Uh, it's like shattered, doesn't work. And uh, it's a little bit bent up around the edges here. So I've already gone ahead and un undone, undid, and taken off the bottom panel here, which reveals pretty much everything we need access to. I went with this laptop specifically because everything is so easily accessible here. So we have upgradable RAM. We actually don't have a battery, but that's okay. I don't think we will need one. And we do have an NVMe uh, M.2 slot as well as a uh, Wi-Fi card. So we could use that theoretically if we wanted to. So the main thing I wanna do here is turn this into a NAS. Now, how am I gonna do that? Theoretically, you could just take a DAS or a direct attached storage unit uh, like this one I have over here from TerraMaster, maybe you can see it on, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy connected via USB, boom, you have a NAS. And that's fine. You could do that, it would work great, but I wanna do something a bit more fun here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the M.2 to SATA adapter that I used in my last uh, B-Link ME mini video, put that in here and design an entire case where this whole unit can sit in here I will be removing the screen, but imagine this sitting in a nice little chassis with all of the components underneath and the ability to add storage. Uh, and it'll all fit in a rack mountable or desktop mountable chassis that actually looks nice. So yeah, that's the game plan. I haven't designed it yet. I've done some mock uh, 3D design, but I have the concept up here. Now let's go over, I guess, the, the other components of this. So the only thing I really need is the ability to power hard drives and the ability to power the laptop. We don't have a battery. If you're technically running this as a server, you'd probably want to remove the battery anyway, since having a lithium ion battery plugged in 24 seven is not really good. We don't have one anyway. As long as it's powered in, it'll be connected to a UPS anyway. So that's not a problem. Now, what I'd like is the ability to add six drives and my design is gonna handle uh, four SSDs and two three and a half inch hard drives. And now the way we are going to power everything is with this guy. This is a 500 watt uh, ITX tiny uh, power supply. What I'm gonna do is essentially take the connections. We have standard ATX connections here. Uh, plug them in, I do get SATA and Molex, which should be enough to power uh, six drives. So no issues there. Uh, but what we do need is 19.5 volts to go into the laptop because that's what it requires. So what I did was purchase this guy, which is a 12 volt to 19 volt at five amps uh, adapter. So theoretically around 100 watts plenty for this laptop. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take the 12 volts from one of these, probably the 24 pin, and plug that into here, which will then convert it to 19 volts, run it to a power connector into here, and we should have enough power to uh, do our laptop and our hard drives. Um, the first thing I actually have to do is do the 12 volt to 19 volt to power connector just to make sure that this laptop works. I actually bought one of these uh, for Dell, but it fits in the HP. It's a USB-C to a DC barrel jack connector that's supposed to work with this laptop, but it doesn't. Uh, the picture said this thing works. 
I'm gonna trust them. I'm gonna set all this up, meaning that we need to find out which one of these is 12 volt, uh, depin it, connect it to this, and then connect it to this. So let's do that. I bought this 24 pin adapter thing that also includes a switch so that I could easily turn the unit on and off. But the next step was to add the 12 volt input from the converter to the 12 volt and ground pins from the 24 pin connector. My crimping tool hadn't come in yet, so I was using some needle nose pliers. Four out of 10 wouldn't recommend. Then I just needed to connect the 19 volt output to the barrel connector. I thought I got B-roll of this, but I guess not. All I did was use these solder seal wire connectors, nine out of 10 highly recommended. And of course, everything worked perfectly. Okay, so we have a problem here. I have everything wired up. We test the voltage going directly to the uh, laptop charger. We are getting 19 volts, which is what this laptop requires. However, when I plug it in, and go to charge it or turn it on. We are getting nothing. No spinning, no lights, no anything. <sighs> okay, it's two days later and uh, we have a solution to the problem. So yeah, I was getting 19 volts out of this, but turns out after I purchased an actual HP charger that uh, the plugs are slightly different. Looks like it's the same girth, but it's not quite long enough to pleasure the laptop. You'll see if I plug in this guy, we have power, we have lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, connection off of this. It was like $9, it's all right. I couldn't find just the connector for this. So yeah, we're gonna cut this off, put this back on. Fingers crossed we should be good then. Yeah, 18 gauge. Oh no, I burned it. I know you should be doing this with like a uh, heat gun, but... Okay, we have a connection. Now, the moment of truth. Power supply on. Please give us a light here. i will be sad if it doesn't work. Yes, we have a light. Okay, we should be good. Fans are spinning. Laptop is booting up. Let's confirm it. Let's see if we can get something on the screen. Okay, so the next steps, I guess, is that I am going to throw Linux on here and plug in my uh, SATA adapter boy thingy. Make sure that, that all works. And then we are just going to remove the screen because obviously we don't need it anymore. And then uh, we get to designing. This required me to bust out the Dremel again and don't be an idiot and make sure you are wearing eye protection from the very beginning. Plastic in the eye doesn't feel good. Afterwards, I had a perfectly straight rectangle in the chassis that would allow us to fit the SATA adapter. Okay, and just like that, we have a flat screenless laptop server thing with access to our six SATA ports. And um, I threw a little curveball. I'm going with Unraid instead of uh, Proxmox or TrueNAS or whatever, simply because uh, this is the only storage I have and I wanted access to as much of it as possible. And I'll say I haven't used Unraid in a little bit. So we're gonna go with Unraid. I've actually already tried it out, it works. Another reason why I didn't just leave the bottom uh, piece off is because the case actually is required to have RJ45 working <laughs> in here. So I needed that. But I think it's just better to not have everything exposed. Okay, so the plan is the piece that I dremeled down below that I was actually working on, that's gonna be what I'm gonna build my base and walls out of. This is gonna sit at the very top. Underneath is gonna be all the components. Uh, what I have to design first is a mount for the power supply. So I'm gonna design that. I'm gonna get all my dimensions sorted and kind of mapped out for all my components. And then we'll build something, I guess. So after a few days of design, this is what I came up with, which I think is decent, but more on that later. But it's one thing to design it and it's another thing to actually build it. I printed out the pieces and did a little mock-up on the MDF board to make sure it would all fit. And it was at this moment that I avoided a huge mistake. I initially wanted this to fit in a 19 inch rack. So I just said, hey, let's make it roughly 18 and a half inches long and that'll be fine. But then I realized the usable space of a 19 inch rack isn't 19 inches. So I had to change my dimensions from 470 millimeters to 440 millimeters to compensate. I probably would have cried if I didn't catch that. After another test fit, it was time to cut some wood. 
It was at this time I was wishing I had a track for my circular saw because I tried using the table saw thinking it would be easier to get straight cuts, which for smaller pieces is true, but for larger pieces, not so much. I ended up with the base of the chassis not being square at all, which required me to redo it, and this time it turned out a lot better. I cut the side pieces after that and then glued everything in place and did another test fit. Then in an attempt to make it look nicer, I got this iron-on walnut banding, which I've seen used plenty of times, but I've never used it myself. I did a test run on a scrap piece of MDF, and yeah, it's pretty easy to use. I went ahead and did the banding on the entire chassis, which went okay. I'd suggest pressing the iron down to melt the adhesive rather than pretend you're ironing a shirt or something, because that was causing the banding to slide out of place. Anyway, after about 30 minutes or so, the entire chassis was covered, and from far away, I think it looks pretty decent. Then it was time to actually assemble the unit. I started with the side panel slash fan holder and then went with the storage mount. I then realized I needed to put the drives in first, because that wouldn't be possible after it was mounted. Next, I mounted the power supply into place. Note that I am using these self-tapping wood screws, which makes this super easy. The last piece to mount was the boost converter, which was done in the same way. The fans were then screwed into place, which would be connected to this little fan controller, which does have the option to add RGB, and we all know that adds 10% of a performance boost. After wiring everything up, I used some 3D printed supports to keep the laptop off of the hardware and noticed an issue. SATA connections were sticking out too far and not allowing the laptop to sit level. I didn't want to do this, but I poached the NVMe extender from my B-Link build and mounted that to the side of the chassis, which moved those SATA connections out of the way, allowing the laptop to sit flush. And that brings us to today with our working laptop NAS, a NAS top, if you will. And I think going with Unraid was a decent choice since A, it's just a good piece of software, and B, it doesn't require me to use any of my precious storage to run. Now this isn't going to be an Unraid walkthrough or anything, maybe I'll revisit that in another video, but let's talk about how this performs. Right off the bat, with our 8TB RAID 1 pool, we are easily maxing out that 1 gig connection, which is probably to be expected. I did monitor the temperatures while the drives were doing their parity sync and while hitting them with write tests, and the temperatures were perfectly fine sitting in the 40 degree range. The drives I have in here don't use a ton of power, so any kind of airflow should be fine. As for the processor, I wasn't too worried about that either, since we are leaving its default cooling system intact, and it's already a low-power mobile chip anyway. To test the raw performance and thermals, I ran Geekbench 6, which uh, did see us hitting temperatures in the 90 degree range, which is a little surprising. I mean, not a ton of mid-range laptops like this are designed to handle 100% maxed out synthetic workloads anyway. And the results we got were okay. Realistically, for a chip like this, expectations would be to run some containers, use a few VMs, and of course run a media server. Which means we had to install a media server. Normally I'd go with Plex, but I decided to cater to the dozens of jelly finners out there and spin that up. Surprise, surprise, it works great. Any modern-ish Intel chip with built-in graphics is going to handle media streaming no problem. And unless you're trying to run a media server on top of a ton of CPU-intensive stuff, you probably don't need a GPU at all. And in terms of power usage, this entire thing sips just over 40 watts under a normal workload. But at the end of the day, do I suggest that you do this? No. Like some of you were thinking this entire time, just buy a regular chassis and build a normal server. But if you have that creative itch and want to make something fun, then by all means go ahead. And while I did have fun with this build, and I do think that it could serve as a viable addition in any home lab, there are quite a few things that I would change for a more polished version. First, I would plan out all of my hardware a bit better. I found myself making last minute design changes that could have been avoided with better planning. I would definitely redo this drive mount thingy. It's just not good. There's no good way to securely mount all the drives. It's cosplaying as being hot swappable. I can't access the other mount points, so it's secured to the chassis in only one spot, and it could just be a bit more efficient. The chassis design itself was okay. Realistically, I probably could have given it a bit more depth to be able to fit more hard drives, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I do like how the wood banding looks, even though it kind of looks like it was installed by a third grader, but you know, from up close it may look a little rough around the edges, but from far away, it's nice. I think if I had to do this again, it would turn out a lot cleaner. 
It's also pretty neat that this entire thing fits in a 2U space. So while it isn't the most efficient use of 2U worth of space, it's really not taking up that much room. And it is pretty neat that you get a built-in keyboard, mouse, and speakers, but is it useful? No, but is it cool? Yeah. And at the end of the day, that was basically the entire point of this project. So don't ever let the idea of perfection stop you from trying something fun. There will always be a better way to do it. And there will always be someone on the internet whose cousins, dads, wife's boyfriend did it better, but who cares? Home Labbing has never been about min-maxing your setup. It's about learning and making the best of what you've got. But what do you think? Cool, dumb, creative, pointless, a bit of everything? Let me know down in the comments. But that's all I've got for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe for more janky builds. I've actually been having a ton of fun with these projects. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my custom laptop NAS uh, with way better craftsmanship than this. Y'all are wood. And if you're still watching, you're a table saw. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>